All right, I'm just going to pull the Band-Aid off. Um, I've made some poor decisions uh, recently, and I didn't just make poor decisions. I lied about them, and I lied about them to you, uh, my audience who trusts and believes in me, and I'm going to be going over all of them this video, so please, um, <laughs> please stick around until the end. Um, first, I want to talk about the allegations. Um, they're all false. At least that's what I told you. Okay, are they gone? Look, okay, the f it worked. All right, it worked. So I say we still have two more videos to get uploaded. All right, it's been a little while. Um, cringe the album part one. All right, it's up. All right, it's running. It's going well. Uh, so I figure we got to upload part two. M many people haven't even seen part two. There is indeed a part two and a part three. So uh, without further ado, just cringes the album part two. <laughs> Enjoy. What's up, you guys? It's Bradley here. This is a re-upload of Cringe the Album 2, as you know, or may not know. The first one got taken down by Ronnie Radke, but it seems that now that I've buffered like 10 versions of the video and they're all ready to go up as soon as that video gets taken down once again, I think it's safe to do the exact same thing with the second part. So here it is. Uh, here is Cringe the Album Part 2 re-uploaded with just a slight variation so that it makes life a little bit more difficult for Ronnie Radke's sad, pathetic ass. The Drug in Me Is You is the 2011 debut by Falling in Reverse after Ronnie Radke was kicked out of his previous band uh, and let, uh, let out of prison. He decided to form a new band It's called Falling in Reverse. I've already covered multiple things from Ronnie Radke. Uh, and yeah, and this is one more of them, I guess. Yo, so... I, uh, I was in the middle of playing Roblox Courtroom, which is a great game, alright? I was dressed up as Saul Goodman, and all of a sudden, I realized I had to go live. So, I had to shut it off for this, alright? I had to interrupt it for this. Unfortunate. Yo! So, to anyone unfamiliar, uh, Falling in Reverse, we are going to be listening to their entire discography now. You may be asking Bradley... Why the sudden change? Simple as this. Uh, Ronnie Radke is absolutely in love with me. In love with me. He wants to bend me over and he wants to do things with me. He said it in his own words, okay? Uh, he said it, not me. I could at least return the favor in some way. You know, I could at least return the favor by listening to his remarkable discography. Uh, Ronnie Radke was the former, I think, uh, what is it? Return the favor. I don't know. He was like a lead singer of some band until, of course, he was kicked out for being trash. But that didn't stop him from continuing to make music. Escape the fate, that's what it was. And so he was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I don't need you guys. I'll do, I'll do it on my own. And so this is their, um, this is their debut album. The Drug in Me is You. Uh, first song is literally called I'm Raised by Rick. Wolves, which, wow. I imagine this is going to be about how he's so different from everyone else. It's different from the pack. He's just a lone wolf or some shit. Fall off boy type beat. That's funny. Uh, Ronnie's got a lot of energy and a lot of passion and fire. Of course, the dude's still really pathetic, so every word that comes out of his mouth sounds like overcompensation, uh, which I feel like is the uh, epitome of Ronnie Radke as a person, overcompensation. All right, he's got dirt on everyone, and then he's the kind of guy to literally get ratioed by every single person he's ever gotten in a beef with on Twitter. He's a, he's a wolf born through the stars and the moon. Reeks of like early 2000s, but this was released tw what 2011. How is this outdated literally for the year that this came out? When was Panic's debut? 2004. So this shit's literally like eight years too late. I guess you could say it's fashionably late. Oh my guys, it goes full circle. Oh my god, guys. The 
The band has a decent understanding of making things really rumble and pop at certain points to where I feel like even with me not vibing with Ronnie Radke, it does a great job of just sort of pushing through that at moments where I genuinely find the musicality to slap. However, a big gimmick here is just loud. If you're into something just all of a sudden going into a growly flow, then boom, there you go. Uh, this is the same maximalist crap that I feel like they're still doing today. I don't love it, but I think that it's uh, a decent improvement from what they released afterwards. So I don't, I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. The low shrug for me, very inoffensive. Um, I yawned like five times during it because I just don't buy anything that Ronnie says. If there was ever like a human version of a pussy, it's literally Ronnie Radke. So every time he tries hyping himself up about something, I, I just. My brain shuts down and I'm just like, <sighs> so. Next we have Tragic Magic. Damn, you already got one rhyme. Easy peasy done in the first, before the song even starts. Yo, we got 666 viewers. That's pretty hype. I'm back. <laughs> Another issue I have is it's just this flat radio rock mix that's like super popular at this time to just make everything sound as dull and as one note as possible and it just sounds like crappy pop rock. I'm just like Oh my god, my ears. Good God, this is very serious subject matter being treated like like a Hamilton style musical. Holy shit, this is bad, dude. The first song I could say is like inoffensive and decent, you know, at, at a level to where I even I was like moving along to it at a point, but like. This this is this is quite literally the worst thing ever. They call me king of the music scene. Bro. Besides literally like Twitter groupies, who the f Hey Jonathan. The f kind of currents? What the f is that? It's an it's a shekel. Oh wow. It's an old Israeli shekel, bro. Shout out Israel, dude. Let's fucking go. That's lit. Yo, shout out. It's Monopoly money. Let's go. Uh, oh, Christ. I, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get me out of this perpetual hell. It's going to do it again. Wow, it's good to know that he was always this narcissistic. You no, know, and again, I love you, Ronnie. You know, don't don't get it wrong. You know, you're right when you say haters are the biggest fans. I'm your biggest fan. You know what I mean? I'm gonna be riding your dick for the next five albums. All right, as that's that's my life right now. It's just listening to your music. That's all I care about. You know, at least I can admit that I love you. But you need me as much as I need you, and that's what I'm waiting for you to admit. I'm waiting for you to put down the curtain. You know, I'm waiting for you to. To, to lower lower your guard and let me in. This, this, this is the auditory equivalent to a tricycle with truck nuts on it? Oh my god. La, 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 la. Yeah, musical genius. Oh my god, that's bad. History is something that cannot be forgotten. I've been through seven days live. I've been challenged and I always win. I have been through wars and come out with no scars. That was the worst song in the album. I mean, there's only been two songs, but I think it must be noted that that was by far not even close to the worst song of the album. That was the Red Headphones. Oh. That was uh, very embarrassing, uh, extremely self-aggrandizing, and uh, without backing it up, instead doing la 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 and being as annoying as possible, while simultaneously saying that uh, everyone who hates him just uh, simply... Goes to the barber shop and wants to get his ugly ass haircut. All right, that was pretty bad. Yo, we got the title track here now. 
I mean, it's no surprise why that's like there's a huge gap between the first song and then this one with that. That was that was straight ass. The drug in me is you. <laughs> I heard a knock upon my door the other day. Oh, this I remember. I saw the music video for this one. Everywhere I go, I drag this coffee just in case. Oh my god, guys, Snake Eyes reference? It's a hundred year old house. Oh yeah, no, that's the whole thing, is the over-exaggerated singing was like a huge thing at the time. Yeah, that's like Ronnie's whole thing, is Ronnie is one of the most over-exaggerated singers ever that I've heard. And they do it in the most no annoying, emo, whiny way. But I mean, people love that. And it's one of the reasons why he found so much success, but I just personally find it to be one of the cheapest, gimmickiest, awful things you could possibly do. That... I mean, even Ronnie understands that because he stopped doing that today as much, but yeah. Oh my god, if we are born to die and we all die to live, then what's- the bro. Oh my god. Am I gonna check out his first project, Dying in Your Latest Fashion, he did with Escape the Fate, came out in 2006 before he went to prison? Is it worth checking out? That's right, it's Disney Channel Halloween season. You're watching Disney Channel! Now this song has some redeemable moments and I feel like structurally it kind of works. I think the chorus has uh, some moments where it actually is nice. But overall, the issue is... One. Listening to a narcissistic prick. Number two. Sounds outdated and edgy. And number three... I believe Ronnie once said he has wrote so many lyrics in prison for like 10 albums right away. This album's so bad I want to deduct points from Hufflepuff. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> That's good. Would Ronnie be in Hufflepuff? Ronnie the kind of guy to be in Slytherin, I feel like. I know that's like an obvious pick. You know what I mean? Like, that's just the obvious thing to go to. But I think it's obvious for a reason. Wow, fam. I'm not a vampire. Speaking of MCR, I guess the MCR influence runs deep in this one. Dude, these basic ass chords. It's like, no matter how many synths, no matter how many guitars you throw at it, it just sounds like a basic ass chord production. Well, hold that muscle, you gotta slow down, uh, coming in with that heat. I'm not a vampire, but I feel like one. DJ Kevin! Remarkable. You might as well just, you know. I'm, I'm not gonna take. I'm not. Well, he said it, so I didn't have to. I guess you can have any woman in his bed, including your daughter. You know. You know, continuing uh, the tradition of um, pop punk singers doing things that are uh, completely disposable and awful. Whoa, Ronnie Radke, what's this about daughters or whatever? Ow, ow, oh man, it hurts. You know, actually though, I feel like Ronnie Radke... See, the problem with Ronnie Radke is he's the kind of guy who wouldn't mind going back to jail because he believes that that would make him even more credible as an artist. It's true. Ronnie, literally the kind of guy who would go back to prison just because he thinks that it's going to make him harder. Like, actually. Oh, oh. 
Only reason Ronnie would be a Slytherin is because he'd disagree with the Sorting Hat. Bro, sounds like Frat House Tim Burton core. Oh yeah, no, but that's the thing. Is like it is. It's like a copy of this whole sound that was going on with artists like MCR, where it was like this dark and menacing sound, but with again self-grandizing lyrics that completely ruin that. <laughs> I'm more crazy than a short lady trying to give birth to 84 babies. Bro, what? Wow. So, so that. Black Sabbath is the inspiration. I thought it was old school Eminem and Dr. Dre. Oh, wow. Great. Gravity Falls. It does kind of sound like the Gravity Falls theme a little bit. A little bit. Fuck all you hoes. Detroit till I die, motherfucker. I'm not a vampire. I mean, the name is just edgy for the sake of it. There are some moments there where it is genuinely sad, and you could really feel the, the pain as he is struggling with substance abuse, and there is some real emotional turmoil in that. But <coughs> the dude likes to oversell everything in the most dramatic and awful way. That being said, the instrumental is great. You know? Low shrug. Not the worst thing he's done. You know what's so funny? I accidentally pasted the shekel image and what happened is the keyboard reversed so i tried deleting it but it actually deleted the thing uh in front of it instead of before it because that's how the language is um that's really funny anyways what a guy goes like bad guys i had this question for a very long time what do good girls like bad Yes, this song is from this band. It is actually so obvious. Like once, once you finally attach the two pieces, it it does make sense. Yes. Dude, I feel like a pregnant woman right now because all I want to do is vomit. You know what I mean? I thought this was made by Panic. Yeah, not only is it sad that this was made by a, a D-rate emo band, but like the fact, this is Certified Cut Classic. The sad is that this is, this came out in 2011, right? Like that alone, it is so beyond outdated at this point. If you should watch the punk rock NBA video about Ronnie, you would see how he's always trying to be a better person and you would hopefully stop being rude. That, hold on. We're gonna, you know what? This is, this gives me a good opportunity to go through the, uh, look at this, look at this. So, this ain't even about me. I'm not even gonna pull the one, one up about me. Mr. Radkey, do you think my icon, see, see, this is someone making a snarky comment or whatever, and then he pulls up a bunch of people with specifically somewhat off color, like, like, I guess you could say aren't as traditionally attractive as what Ronnie Radkey would accept. And he says, you're most likely one of those, one of these people. That was the first thing that I saw on his Twitter. I didn't even pull up the shit about me. Like, you're, t you're telling me that this guy is trying to be a better person? What about the one where he uh, intentionally, no, oh, Lufty, constantly on the streams, transgender woman, immediately, immediately makes a comment here that's kind of funny towards Ronnie Radke, his response, fucking ew, please stop tweeting at me. Now, you could easily say that that's just a coincidence, but the guy literally does follow anti-trans, like, TikTok accounts and stuff. So, you know, there's that, also. The guy is just, he's just trying to be a better person. He's just trying to be a good guy. I'm, t I'm just saying, like, it, it took me about two seconds to pull that up. I didn't even have to try. So, please, I'm sorry that you believe that. Clueless Wolf, thank you for joining the Brad Army. Hoo-ha! <laughs> See, 
it, he's being ironic here, but it's just so absolutely awful. It's just so bad. I'm trans fam, a uh, fan who only started watching your channel because of the I didn't mean to haunt you reaction, so happy that you're accepting. It's the th that's the thing though, it's like I'm accepting, but I'm not even like bending over for a cause or anything. I just, I just care enough to be like, I see wrong and I just call it out. That's it. You know? That's, that's it. Right. Don't bend over, that's true. Ronnie's watching. Oh yeah, I guess I could show you guys. Did he? What the fuck? Bro, his comments are so bad. Holy shit. Hold on. Where is it? Did he... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. So, let me show you guys the legacy. It's great. It's great. So, let's start from the very beginning. All right. I ask Ronnie Radke, please explain these lyrics. Literally, this is, this is it. Please explain these lyrics. I've heard this about 500 times. I have no clue on God's earth what this means. Me to be real music and you gotta feel stupid to be still choosing to abuse the privilege and you still use no, like genuinely, I, I've heard that about a million times. I've thought about that constantly. It's gotten stuck in my head and I have no clue what the f that means at all. I don't even have the slightest clue, right? I had no idea. So he instead comments about the fan made music video. He says, this is a fan made lyric video and the wrong lyrics, Brad. You should understand fan behavior. Well, since you've been riding my dick so hard to begin with, I'm going to end up beating Brad's ass. So it goes from me asking lyrics to him threatening to beat me up. All right, in which case I respond simply with just, just answer the question, pussy, the video isn't the point. And then he gets ratioed immediately. All right, because because he's just overreacting to nothing. And then here we go, a second one. Brad's been lacking in views on YouTube, so he uses my music and notoriety in a negative way to gain views, which then I prove isn't true at all. I just post clown emoji, and then my top videos showing that I'm doing well, and none of these videos have Ronnie Radke in them. Another ratio, right? And then I say this. I dropped, I dropped the bomb on him. I just dropped the bomb on him. I say, Ronnie is one of those people who when they threaten to beat you up, you don't blink. The dude is all cap and a pussy. He's too afraid to be back behind bars where he cannot check his view count. Destroyed. 1,800 likes, all right? He can't take it. His, his ego can't take it. He's, he's destroyed. He's in shambles, right? So... Oh yeah, then he then he retweets this. He takes notice, all right? He takes notice, he retweets it to show that he's aware. He makes transphobic comments. And then, Brad, these numbers are awful. Show me how much money you're making. Bro, he calls my numbers awful. So then, then I, then I dropped the second bomb. Man, it's the biggest bomb. It's my, probably the biggest ratio you'll ever see. 300 likes on his, 1,500. I say this year alone, which means last year. $300,000. Now, just between me and you, keep it secret, this... This number is an exaggeration. It's more like 200,000, but still, all right? I still 200K, so I drop the bomb on him, and then I say, with a second ratio, <laughs> everyone's freaking the fuck out. I just say, so you're gonna explain those lyrics or keep crying, right? And I believe that this is, this is when Ronnie drops the ultimate bomb to show that he, he really means business. He really means business. Truly, here it is. Okay, now bend over and spread your ass cheeks for me. Out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere, with no context, no actual perspective on anything. And he comes back with the, I'm gonna fuck you in the butt uh, response. That's right. And when I saw that, I immediately, I screenshot, I'm like, bro, what the f is this guy on? And so I ratio him again with just simply this you? Because this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, dude, li dude, literally. Do it again! Just do it again! I'll be a gay boy! So, yeah, that's, uh, so, there you go. Now you're all caught up to speed. And that's why we are now reacting to every single Falling in Reverse album. We are going to give him more love. Because he clearly loves me, so I gotta show him I love him back. Aggressive flirtation. Yeah, dude. No, the band here is actually pretty great, you know? It's unfortunate that Ronnie Radke comes through and ruins another set of great musicians. Wait, he yelled the word guitar? guitar? Ew, I didn't even hear that. You're doing the same as him being childish and negative with a horde approving you? Of course! I didn't deny that. I'm just saying at least I'm man enough to admit it. I'm, I'm equally as toxic.
I was as soon as I started saying and and interacting with him, I became just down on his level. The only difference is, is I got more likes. And as far as I'm concerned, in in a mudslinging battle, that's all that matters. Can we listen to Mace you sell out for comparison? Hold on, so Ronnie then follows and says, uh, libs of TikTok, hold on. Oh yeah, look at this. So this is an account that Ronnie follows. If you walk into your kid's classroom and this is what greets you, that's a sign that, uh, to homeschool your kids. This is a middle school in Utah. A hate post simply at someone, some teacher with a, uh, pride flag. You know? I mean, I... All I'll say is just it's one of those things that's just pretty hard to, to twist, you know? There's several people who have been extremely effective combating gender ideology, and none of the most effective voices ever soft pedal the issue or prioritize niceness above truth. 2023 is a great year to destroy gender ideology. We're just getting started. Hmm. Hmm. You know? Brad, you know you want it from him. Don't lie. I didn't say I didn't. Have I said once, have I said once, ew, to what Ronnie Radke is offering me? I have not. No! You gotta do it! You gave me the f***ing clap. It's, dude, it's censored like it's some sort of trashy, like, episode of Jerry Springer, too. Like, what the f***? Dog. Anyways, that was literally the worst song ever. I mean, it's, that was terrible. I, I hope I don't have to explain why that was literally the worst, but it, it just was. All right. Next song, uh, Pick I'm Up the Rick. Phone. Wait, what? I didn't even rate the last song. Pick Up the Phone, girl. Oh, my God, it's jazz. I heard the feedback. I'm a poser. Oh, my goodness. The phone. Answer your text. You better be alive. Oh my god. Dude, this is what too much Eminem does to a man. So this is a song about how she doesn't respond to his text fast enough, so she's probably a uh, no good slut. And he needs her to pick up the phone so he can give her the smacking. Which, again, this guy is heavily inspired by Eminem. I don't take a single word of this as anything more than satire. So, I don't think that this is a reflection of character. But I still think that this song is trashy regardless. Oh, oh. You know, maybe this wouldn't be as uh, bad if it wasn't, like, based on real events that Roddy Radke would actually do to a woman. Now they're only taking you, Ronnie. They're gonna see the scratch marks and the, and her, you know, clearly in a position of fear and then you saying, wasn't me. Uh, what, what, what was it, the lyrics? Hold on, hold on, let me find it. She's a goddamn bitch, man. The truth is she was pissed. I broke it off. So what she did was calculate a plan to hurt me any chance she could get. That's probably what he's telling the uh, the people in the interrogation room. Uh, I never hit my girlfriend. She's a goddamn bitch. This is all a calculated plan to get it. Ronnie, because he's such a good, nice guy. Understand the kicking, the screaming, the breaking, the left will be damned if I see you with some other man. Anyways, it sucks to hear such great musicianship from uh, the other members of the band. I, that's the thing. It's great musicians are everywhere. You know what I mean? They decided they wanted to work with Ronnie Radke. I feel like I'm glad to hear that at least somebody in this band is competent. You know what I mean? Or else this would be just an absolute shit show. Be careful if Ronnie hears you trashing his music. He'll tweet about you. V, I'm sorry, but I think you're a bit late to the party on this. Uh, we've already, we're, we're, we're on the, uh, what is it called? The declining actions of the story right now. Exactly, he wants my ass. Exactly, it's, we're in the falling action, the falling in reverse action. That's what it's called. Oh yeah, if you scroll back, you'll get the whole lore. One thing I haven't mentioned this entire video is that Ronnie Radke is in love with doing one of my least favorite things in music, which is, oh, which is like the most cheesy and awful, like, it's just awful. I hate it every time I hear anyone do it. And Ronnie Radke, it's like one of his signature moves. 
I'm still surprised that person that says people are sensitive is tweeting about someone's opinion so much. Bro, the guy just has a humiliation fetish. Like, he, he's someone who understands very well that any attention is good attention. I, I genuinely think that he does know what he's doing with it. Um, he's just going the low road. You know what I mean? That's why he just doesn't care about consequences. Is he... Like, I, I think that there is, like, a level of calculation to it. I don't think it's just, like, pure being a moron, you know? This motherfucker really thinks that he just made the rock equivalent of Kim. And I don't think he's too far off. I actually think that's one of the best songs of this album. It's a shrug. Now, I think that it is very ridiculous, very over the top, but it's it does a good job at least at showing that it is that. Now, of course, there are real life actions that you could tie to this song, but if you don't do that, then uh, then the song itself is actually fine. I don't think it's that terrible. I mean, especially in comparison with like good girls, bad guys, I don't think it's nearly as bad. So don't mess with a Ouija board. Oh my God. Now that's what I call assault volume four. This is the equivalent of a, a song that would show up in an old school Smosh video. This is um, it's pretty bad. Hey, oh shit, that goes hard. Oh, thank you so much, known for BS. Dude, that riff was great, and then it's Ronnie just like sounding like a child with like a like like a microphone right now, trying to sound hard. The band does great, though. Lucas Graham! Go again. <laughs> wow. In life, there's people that hustle. In life, there's people that grind. Don't mess with the Ouija boards is so bad it's self-parody. It's a red oh. hat. I can't even believe this is real. The instrumentation is fantastic, and then you literally just have Ronnie Radke like laughably screaming, "Don't mess with Ouija boards!" And I I don't understand who let this child into this band to just ruin the f music. That is so bad. I'm Sink or swim. Rick. Next song. Another five what minutes. Good girls like bad guys. Just like my content. It's true though. It is true. That's one thing me and Ronnie have in common. I'm just a kid with a soundboard. You know what I mean? And, and a mediocre sense of humor. You know? But at least I don't have a band behind me who, who I'm ruining the, you know, credibility of. Yeah, their band is Six Flags because they do the mic stage, right? It is the exact same song, you're right. Yo, Jack, welcome to the br Oh, wait, no, you got 21 pilots. Nope, never mind, guys, false alarm. Ew, it's so bad. What the fuck is this beat? Why is it not ending? Red headphones. Dog. Band is unironically the reason why rock bands are banned as Six Flags after a fight broke out. Oh yeah, yeah, I heard about that. And what sucks is uh, they didn't Six Flags didn't realize that Falling in Reverse is not your everyday rock band. They are quite literally dog shit. I saw Falling in Reverse live and Ronnie started throwing a fit because the crowd refused to sit on the ground for his IG story, and it had rained and it was muddy. Wow, remarkable, dude. That's that's just. A guy with just endless perspective. What the f***? This is called Caught Like a Fly. Attention, attention, everyone! Thank you, uh, Gotti. Oh my god, wait. This this is gonna be a Danny Brown feature, I know it. Caught like a fly. Nah, dude. Nah, dude. Just go back to your boring screaming. Don't do this shit, dude. Like some sort of Disney villain. Six Literal clown core. Excuse me? What kind of a low blow is that? Dude, what? Did he really just take it there? Is he really just using the fact that their father beat them as like... You know, Ronnie's just trying to be a good person, you guys. He's just trying to be good. Bro thinks he's making mama too? That's true. Oh, no. 
Carry me, carry me all along. Thank you, Lord. Now that's what I call generic 2000s radio rock. Yeah, but this came out 2011. Anyways, uh, this dude literally thinks he made Mama too. Literally. And uh, he didn't. Red headphones. Dog. Ugh, that was bad. Oh, the misery. Everybody wants to be my animal. Exactly. Also, featuring garbage truck outside. Hope you guys don't mind. Ronnie Rag, he probably gonna make it a comment about, yo, look at this loser with a garbage truck outside of his house. How is this guy so poor to afford amenities like automatic garbage removal from his, uh, from his life, you know? The next two songs, so first of all, this song is easily the worst song in the album, and it's completely unlistenable, and playing it back, it is infuriatingly bad. So I'm just going to end up skipping the next two, because if I have to listen to this album anymore, I'm gonna go insane. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna skip to the end. Fuck all you hoes! Detroit till I die, motherfucker! And that's this album. I mean, Ronnie tried his hardest, but the dude just isn't there, skill-wise. Maybe it's just the fact that he's a raging narcissist. Like, he's, he's definitely, you know, he's got some interesting elements to him, but the dude is just... As much as he wants to call it satire, there's just too much here that's just annoying and obnoxious to the point of where, even if it is satire, I find it to just be completely joyless to listen to. It's because he's unlikable as a motherfucker, dude, and it's just, it's, it's hard. It's not fun. That last song is a red headphones, a really dull ending to this Dog. album. <sighs> and that's the drug in me is you, which is not even true because of the drug addiction. I'm feeling a light too on this project. I think that it's better than uh, the one that they come out with afterwards, but it's still pretty insufferable. The band does an amazing job on this project regardless. Uh, but honestly, Ronnie being as insufferable as he is with some of the worst lyrics I've heard on any project ever, this album comes off as nothing more than a cheesy and annoying gimmick. That being said, uh, that being said, it's got some melody here and there, you know? It's got the occasional bumping moment, but it's also just extremely gimmicky and obnoxious, so. Anyways, you guys, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, that's, that's it for this, though the Ronnie Radke saga will continue as we're going to just continue going through album by album. I'm on a non-stop mission. All right, we're probably going to call this video cringe to electric boogaloo or something, you know? We're going to, it's going to be a motherfucking classic.